Hey Bat fans, Luke here ready to bat chat about our next bat book and today we're going to continue the video series I kind of started last time uh, with the last video and that's going to be taking a look at the uh, Legends of the Dark Knight series. Uh, this in particular video we're going to take a look at uh, Legends of the Dark Knight Volume 2 and uh, again uh, with Legends of the Dark Knight we have a, a slew of good creators on this uh, particular volume which uh, covers issues 6 through 10 of the series and in here uh, we'll see um, Jeff Parker uh, Jeff Parker um, for Batman fam you should pretty much remember him primarily with uh, the Batman 66 series uh, Christos Gage uh, you'll know him now in particular he's doing the Batman Sins of the Father uh, story uh, the six issue mini dealt with the um, the Telltale uh, video game series and before that you'll see him periodically in um, in Marvel I think with Super or Spider Man periodically uh, I think when uh, some uh, some issues where Dan Slott was off for a little bit uh, addition you got Paul Tobin uh, we got Ricardo Sanchez Ray Fox Ray Fox um, Again, should be no stranger to Batman. He um, he did Gotham by Midnight, one of my favorite uh, uh, titles during the New 52. In addition, he was part of the uh, Batman Eternal run, and then he also did a little stint on Batgirl just off the top of my head. Um, see, artist-wise, um, Gabriel Hardman, Michael Avon Oming, Juan Jose Rip. Juan Jose Rip is a fantastic artist. Um, Jason Masters, Trad Moore, Sergio Sandoval, Jeremy Rappick, Stefan Ruix, Christopher Sprouse, and Carl Story. So, again, pretty solid uh, group of professionals on this particular volume. And this one, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight stories, whereas the last one. Uh, volume had nine, and the one thing I kind of mentioned what I like about Legends of the Dark Knight is that, again, they're pretty much, it's, you can get a good Batman story in one sitting. Uh, most of these, relatively short, there's a couple longer ones in this one compared to the first volume, which I think kind of tweaked away my enjoyment a little bit of it. Uh, I still thought the stories are really uh, fun and entertaining, but uh, the stories were just a little bit, a little bit longer, which again, which isn't bad, but I just I just liked uh, the one thing with the, the volume was that it was good, but the stories are real quick, digestible, relatively quick. Again, it's one you can put it down and come back five minutes later. Or heck, if you want to wait a couple of weeks and come back, and you'll be totally fine and not be lost or anything like that. But uh, this one, the stories are a little bit longer, and that's still okay, and they still kept it in digestible size amounts. Um, again, just kind of going through some of the stories. Kind of hit like you know the Cliff Notes version because uh, since they're so small uh, in length, again some of these, most of these are there's not. I think there's only I gotta think about it. Uh, who has the really really short ones? Uh, the first one, the Parker one, I think I was short. I was like an eight pager. Uh, the second one, uh, third one, definitely the fourth one was real long. Carved was relatively short. I, I would say out of all of them, the first one was pretty much a short one. And that one was Gotham Spirit, which was written by Jeff Parker with art by um, Gabriel Hardman. And that one was a, a relatively simple story. Uh, what it dealt with was a bunch of no-name thugs uh, ripping off um, a Gotham Spirits, you know, a, an alcohol store. And it's just Batman going after the, the thugs. Uh, art was good, but it was a relatively simple story, which... Um, if that's your thing, you'll kind of enjoy it. Um, next one, Dungeons and Dragons, which was written by uh, Michael uh, Ohm Van Ovan Oming with art by uh, Nick Faldari. This one was a pretty good story. Uh, what it dealt with was like this dragon that's going around and killing all these homeless uh homeless people and what we find out ultimately what it is uh, spoiler on this one uh, it, it's that the, the dragon was a kind of a creature that was made by uh, Killer Croc and not through malicious means is that Killer Croc was just trying to find someone to have you know as a as a personal friend down there in the sewers and obviously the 
the dragon kind of going off uh, doing rogue stuff. So, uh, relatively simple story, but you kind of get it. it. It was fun. Uh, the next story, which was called Look Inside, one of the best ones in this volume, written by Rob Williams with art by Juan Jose Rip. Again, the art was just fantastic in this. And basically what happens here is that Penguin is trying to off off the competition. He's trying to become, you know, the, the main crime lord of Gotham. In order to do this, he's got to get rid of the competition. What he does is he hires uh, this individual here, this this. I don't want to say ghost, but it's pretty much a ghost. Um, who has this van that when you open it up and look at it, it unleashes your darkest fears. And that's how he's getting rid of the competition. And then once he does that, he knows basically the person who's in his way now is Batman. So he uses that person to try to go after Batman. But it doesn't work out uh, with a twist that that was really nice and thematic. And then it all comes Come crawling back on the on the penguin and it doesn't work out. So uh, that one again was probably one of the better stories. Not the best. There's, I think, uh, one or two. Definitely one more, uh, which is the best. I think this is definitely it. Uh, Hanum Gartham. This one is probably one of the the longer stories in this volume. And what it is is that there's one of the uh, medical providers of um, of uh, in Arkham. And then you, you see a couple cameos through people here, but mainly the cameos deal with uh, Maxi Zeus and the Joker. Primarily more Maxi Zeus. Joker's kind of like on the periphery, and then he does kind of have some good parts in it. But basically what's happened is that all these uh, inmates who are having uh, medical sessions with this provider are having all these psychotic uh, episodes. They're kind of seeing things or mentioning things. Uh, that they can't see, but it all ties back to the treatment of this individual. And this individual has a very, really uh, a bad past uh, dealing with a, a children's camp that he did some things that definitely are messed up, uh, but then kind of comes back to why he's performing the treatment and then all these sightings that people are seeing all comes through. It all comes through nice, uh, you know, at the very end. Uh, it's a really good dark story. Um, and if it, again, it comes comes back to that whole detective aspect. You see Batman kind of putting the case together, which I thought was really, really nice. Uh, by far, I think that one was the best story of the book. Uh, next one was a story called Carved, which was written by Paul Tobin with Mar uh, art by um, Todd Moore. Uh, let's see if I can get to it. It's kind of hard doing this one-handed. I uh, might have to put the... Phone down, and here I am spawning a whole bunch of good stuff. Okay, here we go. That's the beginning of it. Yeah, Carved. Uh, carved, initially, as I was reading it, again, Paul Tobin, art by Tradmore. And, and you're reading the concept, and it kind of reminded me of the backup story you have when you read uh, the Batman uh, story, uh, The Man Who Laughs. That backup story they dealt with Batman and Green Lantern uh, way back in the day. I dealt with, you know, the wood, the wood killer and whatnot. And basically, and you kind of get through by half of it, you kind of see it go in a different direction. But basically what happens is that there's this person uh, whose uh, family was killed, and he's kind of off and off some targets. And then what he's doing is that uh, the, the targets he's offing wasn't really the right word. Uh, he's kind of holding them hostage, ultimately to kill them at the end, and replacing their bodies uh, at the scene of the kidnapping with like a wooden... Um, uh, figure carve out um, again the twist at the very end um, I know this was a story you know, kind of like the black mask story if you remember you have to go back in your, your history about you know this the whole significance of black masks mask way back in the day when it dealt with the death of his parents all kind of comes into this a little bit which I thought was pretty cool um, but overall a relatively simple story that does kind of wrap up at the end rather nicely I must say um, but, uh, good story. Uh, next story, uh, one again, another one of the better ones actually was a story called Unnatural Selection with, uh, writing by Ricardo Sanchez and art by Sergio Sandal. And what's basically is happening here is that there is an individual who's kind of like a taxidermist who, uh, is creating all these really freakish combinations of creatures. Like he'll combine like a snake with like a, uh, I don't even know, like a, a wolf whatnot and it, and they're relatively small figures but you're seeing some that are coming to life and but they're being brought to life 
by is the use of a Lazarus pit. And there's a whole bunch of twists in it, which I don't want to go too far in depth in. But it's a really good story. Again, another great detective story, Batman breaking down the case. And I thought it was really well done. Art, really cool, I thought, uh, by uh, Sendal in this. And again, a really dark color palette and just really enjoyable art to look at. Um, let's see, without spoiling too much, because I don't want to spoil the twist in it too much. Uh, next one, Dreaming, He is a Butterfly. Uh, I'll probably rank this up, again, remember those ones, I was like, I had two or three really good ones in this. This is one of those ones. Uh, thematic, thematic story. Uh, Batman gets hit by this really bad dose of um, Scarecrow uh, fear toxin, and he kind of takes Batman to one of his worst fears. In that, you know, it's not maybe not a fear, but in a way that Batman goes off the deep end and then there's always people um, trying to pull him back. But the things that he does in this vision, it, it really shocks Bruce to his core. And this is Bruce. This is a man who's been depleted physically, mentally, just by, you know, holding the mantle for Batman for so long. And it's a really great story. And again, it's really well done in how Batman kind of pulls himself out of it at the very end. I thought it was really well done. Um, so yeah, Christos Gage did a, a really good story in this. And uh, again, the twist at the end, I don't want to kind of ruin it. So uh, Next one, Tap Tap uh, by Ray Fox, art by Stefan uh, Routes or row whatever. Um, it's a simple Batman Catwoman story. Uh, Catwoman uh, trying to uh, break into this mansion. Um, the, the, the plot behind it, I thought was really well done as far as you know why that would be a target. But it's just Batman running into Catwoman while she's doing uh, you know five finger discount in this um, in this mansion. Batman come up the end to kind of stop or whatnot. So uh, it's a good story between Catwoman and Bruce. And then, man, I think I lied. This, the last story, might be tied for the best one. Um, I know I talk about Look Inside and Haunted Ocker, but this story off the menu, though, uh, written by David uh, Tishman with uh, pencils by Chris Sprouse, this was a good story. Very good story. And it dealt with a cannibal who's taking out all these people in Gotham. And the twist on the cannibal is that when he, this person ingests the, the flesh of the people he's going after, uh, he, he gains the memories, the strengths, you know, the, the hidden secrets of the person he's consuming. And it's really a dark and creepy story. Um, but the art that doesn't kind of hold back along with some themes. I got another detective driven story, Batman breaking down the case, uh, and in the point that kind of Bruce Wayne kind of becomes a target for this cannibal. So, uh, a fantastic story. Again, one of the best. Uh, I know I said a lot of them are my best. I kind of, the, I'm going to shut this and kind of at the very end, kind of rethink my thoughts. Cause there's some really good stories in this one. Um, Again, I don't want to kind of wrap up any spoilers in this one, especially the twist in it. Um, but yeah, um, as a whole, yeah, this one was good. Volume 2 was really good. Um, let's see, out of the 8, I really got to think about this one. I, I still think Haunted Arkham is... Probably the best. Uh, the best story. Uh, that's probably number one. And then the next one, I think I would probably tie it if I had to really, you had to really hold me to it. I think there would be a tie with the second best story with Off the Menu. That's the one with the cannibal. And A Look Inside. That's the one with the ghost written by Rob Williams. After that, eh. Yeah, I think Unnatural Selection, Dream, He's a Butterfly. Dream is a Butterfly, I think it'll probably be the next one. Then after that, it kind of racks and stack. Uh, overall, this was really good. Uh, I give this another 4 out of 5. Even the one, the short story, the one in the very beginning, the Gotham Spirit uh, story, while it's simple, it's a simple Batman story. 
point blank. But the one that's good, the good thing about this particular series, and this volume anyway, um, again, I mentioned, kind of mentioned the first one, the first volume, that's very thematic. Um, it kind of breaks away from the thematic in, in this particular volume, is that there's some stories that have some good themes where, where I think pretty much every story in the first volume had a theme I was kind of going for. Um, but in this, it's not really much a theme, it's more of a, a an angle on uh, Batman's strength. And this one, obviously, I think it's Batman's ability, his detective ability, his come down and Break down the case, the facts, you know, the greatest detective ever lived, whatnot. This one is just all Batman being a detective and solving the case, point blank. Even though I get that that first story is a simple story, but it's Batman really just being the detective and solving things. And while it might be more, you know, fist to cuff, strength brute type thing in the first story, everything else kind of has that theme of, you know, Batman's uh, detective ability. So uh, I'm giving this another four out of five. This was great. Good stuff. Uh, I did read volume three. Don't know when I'll get to that. I was thinking about doing back to back, but I'm kind of waiting to see when my books come in. So anyway, four out of five. Hit me up in the comments below what you thought if you read this particular volume, and then we'll bat chat and go from there. So uh, until next video, which will either be volume three of this series, which have some thoughts about it, um, or the last issue of Tynan's Run and Detective, we'll see, uh, but it'll definitely be one of those two, probably pop up uh, sometime tomorrow, so until then, take care.